Very cool. So if a customer finds you at wildwoodfloattrips.com and books you for a trip, uh, what, it, what is it that you expect them to bring? Um, either their rain gear or sunscreen, depending on the weather. So we provide pretty much everything else. Uh, if they're new to the experience of either fly fishing or spin fishing, a lot of people are, you know, uh, the fly fishermen are trout anglers first, so they don't have a lot of the bigger equipment. So we can supply that for them, their flies, leaders, everything. The lunch is also provided. And um, all they basically have to do is show up with their license and um, gear for the day for, you know, protecting from the elements. And the gear that you run, um, <laughs> seven weights, eight weights? Yeah, seven, eight weights. We throw, uh, they're big fish, so we throw big flies at them. Uh, off, off times it's pretty windy up here, it can be. Uh, so we like to make it as easy as possible. And some people would think that an eight weight wouldn't be that easy, but trust me, it's, it's probably the way to go here to make the most enjoyable day. A nice, easy pick-up and lay-down cast with an 8-weight is something that can be done all day. With a 6-weight, you're double-hauling and doing lots of casting, as I remember. Yes, yeah, exactly. And it's a long, long day. The anglers work much harder than I do rolling the boat. I'll, I'll be the first to admit that. So you want to make it as most as uh, enjoyable as possible. And an 8-weight seems to get that done a lot easier than... Um, a six weight or a lower weight rod. And, you're and besides that, we we want to be nice to the fish when we do hook one. We want to land it as soon as possible to try to prevent from you know overstressing it too. Certainly, certainly. The first time I fished with you, I uh, was pretty proud of my casting ability and came up with a six weight. And you kind of rolled your eyes. Perhaps the fact that it was yellow jacket, yellow. You're not getting in my boat with that <laughs> rod. I remember you saying. And you yeah. told, told me how easy it was with an eight weight, and after about ten minutes, I discovered that you were right because I took a look in the fly box that that you run in that boat with a great big bumper sticker that says "Slack is evil," and if you fish with Kip, that will be that will be ingrained. You will keep all of the slack out of your cast. But I took a look in your fly box and I thought, "Hokey smokes, um, these are either." Very small pike flies or very large largemouth flies, and we're running flies like this for smallmouth. Tell us about the size of the flies that you run. Uh, it, it, they're they're bigger. I mean, uh, the whole idea for me, um, the way I, I approach it is is to see the head. I mean, a uh, fly angler, fly fish is to see the fish eat the fly, and a big gaudy, flashy fly. Is a is easier to see and b it attracts more attention, moves more water, and the fish are going to key on it. Uh, you know the old saying with uh, a bass's diet is ninety percent crayfish. Well, that's probably true, but if there's a porterhouse steak fly in front of him, he's probably going to eat it. That's why we throw the bigger flies just to try to get them an enticement and let the angler see what really happens when a when a bass pounces on on a big streamer or a popper for that matter. So. And I, I noticed that a lot of your flies are bright white or yellow or bright gold. I know you, you are kind of infamous in the industry for having uh, interesting names for your flies. I see you, you run Goldie a lot. Is that a fly that you run because you can see it, the client can see it, the fish can see it? It's it's both. I mean, I, I like to see it because I like to yell at my clients when they miss fish, but I'm, I'm kind of sadistic that way. But um, And also, the Goldie came from watching minnows at on a lunch stop where up above even Monticello, there's there's more river and there's a lot of red tail um, red tails in there and they have a golden hue to them with a stripe. And So I thought, you know, we've run white up here for so many years, why not try gold? So I came home, tied up a gold version of a white fly that I have and, and we started fishing and, it was, and it's been probably the hottest fly for the last couple, at least minnow pattern for the last couple of years. I mean, it has a little different look to it and the slower it's fished, the better it usually fishes. Um, I like to have them strip it in and let the, the fly die and it kind of kicks and it looks like a really wounded bait fish and that's when the fish seem to attack it. So it's it's both, you know, if, if or all three I should say. If the client sees the fish come up and attack a fly, he's hooked. He'll always be a smallmouth fisherman, at least in my theory, and uh, he'll be back, if not with me, but he'll be back to protect the resource and, and enjoy the great rivers that we have. And it's it's a great theory. It's a theory that works for me. Um, Kip and I have fished uh, just as buddies several times. I've run clients up there. When Kip talks about the upper Mississippi being the best smallmouth river on the planet, um, it's no exaggeration. A couple of years ago, Kip and I put together uh, the smallmouth road trip from hell. Um, we 
for our listeners, we drove up to Minneapolis, uh, launched boats on the Upper Mississippi, did a 10-hour float there at the end of the float, uh, loaded the boats on the trailers, drove across the river, stayed the night in Grantsburg. The next day, we had a 10-hour float on the Upper St. Croix, um, yep. which was a hoot. Uh, upper St. Croix is a big girl. Uh, up there, it's bigger, wider, windier than the Upper Mississippi. So that was day two. At the end of day two, we load up the boats. Um, we go across and stay a spectacular resort that Kip <laughs> found in, in Oxbow. Just an amazing place. A little saloon that has tick races. Bull, yes. Bullseye on the bar. Anyway, so the third day we fished the Flambeau. Um, great fishing. Had a good time. Moved a few muskies. Uh, load the boats on the trailer. Head across. The fourth day we fish um, the Menominee River and among members of the Illinois Smallmouth Alliance who go up to the Menominee, and they're pretty rhapsodic about the fishery that's up there that, uh, that the boys run out of uh, tight line shop into pier. Um, I fished all four. I fished four rivers in four days with the same guides. I've got to say the Upper Mississippi is an absolutely spectacular fishery. If you guys uh, who are listening want to get a hold of Kip, he's at wildwoodfloattrips.com. Great phone number, 612 612- Seven two drift because he floats in drift boats. That's six one two seven two drift. Um, you can always get a hold of me at onemorecast.com. Stop in the shop. I've got Kip's information. Kip just just runs spectacular trips. The multi boat trips that he runs. It's more than just Kip. He's got a great stable of guides uh, to work with. We're doing a three-day trip together on the Upper Mississippi the third week of August. All that information's on my website. If you go to onemorecast.com, you'll see the uh, the handsome Kip Beef holding up an absolute pig, pig smallmouth. So if you're interested in that Upper Mississippi trip, take a look at my website. Kip, it was just terrific having you here. I, I, I count the days until I get up and fish with you because it's just spectacular. Um, if any of the clients come up there, and they forgot leader and tippet and flies and all that. How can you help them out? Well, we we have just moved up to the river. We've been I've been doing this for nine years, I think now, and uh, you know we we realized that this is probably going to be my living, and it has been for the last few years. So we bought a place on the river, and we have a small fly shop now on the premises with uh, an apartment to rent, and so it's a one stop shop. If you want to come up and spend a few days, we you can stay right here on the river and. Spectacular. Uh, buy your stuff here at the fly shop and also we also offer walk and weight fishing if you're kind of tired of the drift boat you can just walk out the back door and onto the river well so, very nice i'm so glad you mentioned waiting we're going to uh we're going to go to a commercial and then we're going to pick up colleen treasure with sims and we'll talk about boots and waiters again kip beef from wildwood float trips wildwoodfloattrips.com is his website and uh thank you very much good fishing to you kip thanks joseph it's always a pleasure take care yep bye-bye